So one of the really common questions we get is how to take a really stiff durometer, like for example the uh, 95A uh, Lubrizol material that we have here, and uh, get it to be more flexible. Um, and so really the, the way to do that is uh, with adjusting wall thickness. So I have a couple examples here that I'm going to walk you through to kind of help explain this. Um, so this example has a 75 thousandths thick wall. Uh, this example has a 50 thousandths thick wall. And this example has a 25 thousandths thick wall. Um, they're all the same durometer though. They're all uh, 95A durometer. Um, so the first example here, um, you know, I'm pushing on this thing and pulling on this thing pretty hard and it's flexing a little bit, but you know, it's not, it's not really, really flexible. Um, it's somewhat flexible. Um, <clears throat> so that is a 75,000 thick wall. Uh, this one here, so this is 50,000 thick. Um, and if I take and I put some same amount of pressure on this one, uh, you can see it actually accordions quite nicely. Now I'm, I'm pushing on this thing pretty hard, but it is flexing. Now, <clears throat> these are the same material, okay, as is this one. So this last one here, this is 25 thousandths uh, thick material. This is getting very, very, very thin. Um, this one here will, with very little force, completely crumple up um, and is extremely flexible. Um, but you can see the wall on that is very thin. You know, if I take and do the same thing here, you know, you can actually see the wall is thicker. And then we get all the way up to this one. <clears throat> it's extremely thick. So. Um, so wall thickness is really how you control uh, flexibility with TPU. Now I have a practical example of this phenomenon. Uh, so this part right here is uh, actually a, an inflatable plug for a project we're working on. And you know you can see we, we put a air fitting, we press in a barbed air fitting on this end right here so we can pressurize this. And um, as you can see from the section view that I'm showing right now, uh, this part is comprised of some really thick areas as well as some very thin areas. The thick areas we don't want to flex, uh, for example, around where the fitting goes right here or uh, the bottom, we don't want the bottom to flex or the core. Um, there's also some very thin areas uh, which make up the outer wall and we want that when inflated to expand out and uh, give us our plugging effect. So um, this is a really great example of taking and designing around the flexibility that you need and taking advantage of additive manufacturing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of push on this a little bit, kind of illustrate this point. So you can see right here, if I push in this area, that wall is only 50 thousandths thick and uh, it's very, very soft and flexible. You know, I can, I can take and squish that entire thing in with not a lot of effort, just using my, my own fingers. But if I come up into this area where we printed it solid, I mean, it's not moving at all. It's totally solid, uh, a little bit of flex, but that's about it. Or down here on the bottom even, same thing. You know, I'm really pressing on it um, and the tool isn't moving into the part at all. So this is a really great example of taking the power of additive manufacturing and even though you can't have a multi-durometer with this material, you're only, you only have a 95A durometer uh, to work with, but by designing around that and creating thick areas and thin areas, you can get some areas to be very stiff you can get other areas to be very flexible. It's all about how you design it. So another example of designing for flexibility is lattice structures. Um, so these are three parts that we designed uh, with a lattice structure in there. Um, and it is a part that's used as a pad. <clears throat> so uh, if we look here, um, we've got a couple different uh, thicknesses. So this, it's all identical lattice structure. The only thing that is changing is, is the element size. So how thick 
uh, these cross elements are. That's the only thing that's really changing here. And uh, what you can see is uh, this one over here, uh, they're quite thin. Uh, they're only about 25 thousandths. And this part is extremely, extremely flexible. Um, middle one here, uh, the elements uh, got bumped up to, I believe, uh, 35 thousandths. And you can see, still flexible, but I have to push considerably harder to get the same amount of flexibility out of it. Uh, and then this one here got bumped up another 10 thousandths, which I believe puts us to around 55 thousandths for those element sizes. And this one is quite stiff. Um, and literally the only thing that's changing between all of these is the thickness of the elements that make up the, uh, the lattice structure. Now, one of the important things to take away from this is you'll notice this one's actually broken. So this lattice structure actually is snapped and cracked all over the place. So there is a certain point where you're going to get too thin and you're going to start to see failures inside your part. Um, you can see all these broken lattices in here. And um, basically, you know, what we recommend is doing kind of a design of experiment um, where, you know, you want, you want a certain amount of flex, but you also want to make sure that you're not going to wind up with broken elements. And so that's one of the great things about, you know, additive manufacturing is, you know, you can go right from prototyping into production. And that's what we recommend to a lot of our customers that are messing around with lattice structures is plan on having somewhat of a developmental phase to figure out what's going to get you the amount of flexibility you're looking for, but also get the durability that you need. And like I said, durability is especially critical with lattice structures, not, not so much with other stuff as we've found uh, through our testing.